Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. So now we have to code this screen and we will be done with our Star Wars name app. We know how to do this from the unplugged activity that we did previously. Now we need to actually code it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to blocks. So we know what we have to do. We have to get the first three letters of the last name, first two letters of the first name to create our Star Wars first name. We also have to take the first two letters of our mother's maiden name and add those to the first three letters of the city we were born in order to get our Star Wars last name. So that is a lot. We know how to do it on paper, but how do we actually do it in code? So let's go ahead and do that. In programming, you always want to break things apart into the smallest components to make it easier for you to understand. So we're going to break these four things into the parts that we need. From our first name, we need to get the first two letters from that. So I'm going to make some procedures to make this easier to read. On the left, you can see this is procedures. They're called functions or methods in other programming languages, but these are kind of custom blocks that you can make and call to do subtasks or smaller pieces of your program. We're going to use these a lot this year. I want to get, so there's two type of procedures. This is one where it does not return anything, and this is one where it does return something. Since I want to get those first two things, I'm going to pull this one out. And I am going to call this procedure get first name step one. And let's just make an overall procedure. And I'm going to use this type of procedure. And I'm going to call it set star wars name. Let's comment this out so we can kind of see where we're going. So to get our star wars name, step one we get the first three letters from the user's last name. Step two is we get the first two letters from the user's first name. Step three, we get the first two letters from the user's mother's maiden name. Step four is to get the first three letters from users, city. So these are our steps to actually our Star Wars name. That's a good thing to always comment so you know where you're going. So because I need to get these things, I am going to get my first name. Step one is this, get the first three letters from the user's last name. So I know the user is entering their last name in this box. We call this box TBX for text box last name. I'm gonna click on that. These are the components we can use. So I wanna get what the user types in. Well, it's not gonna be an, an event. It's not gonna be an action. It's gonna be a property. So let's scroll down and you will find this property. You will see text. You will see two of them. You will see a light green one and you will see a dark green one. Do I want to change the text or do I want to get the text? And you can see here, I actually want to get the text. Another good reason about blocks is if I thought it was this one set, you can see that does not fit inside of there. So coding with blocks also helps you because if it doesn't fit, obviously it's wrong. So I'm going to go back to TBX last name. I'm going to pull in TBX last name dot text. So that is giving me whatever the user typed in. However, I don't want the entire thing. I want only the first three letters. So this is text. I want to modify that. I'm going to scroll up, look at this section for the built in blocks. Anytime you want to modify any text, you're going to come here and use these blocks inside of here. So let's click on text. You can see a compare, trim, starts, a bunch of different blocks. I want to get a piece of it. So that is this segment. If I mouse over it, it says extracts a segment giving a length from the given starting point. This is what I want. I'm going to pull this. Well, okay, where does this go? I'm actually going to put this in there. It kicks out my last name. And let's look at this block for a second. 
you have to give me the text that you want to pull from. So I'm gonna put this inside the text. Where do I wanna start? I wanna get the first three letters. So I need to put numbers here. Numbers come from the subject called math. I select math. I'm gonna drag this, put it here. Where do I wanna start? I actually wanna start at the first letter. How many letters do I wanna get? Three, so I'm gonna go back to math. I'm gonna pull this in and type three. So this is my first step. I'm gonna type that here. Step one, get first three letters of your last name. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the other things I need. So we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna make another procedure. I'm gonna call it get first name step two. And that is this. I wanna get the first two letters of my user's first name. You will also notice when you make a procedure, if you click back on procedures, these blocks will show up at the bottom. These blocks are how you're able to call these, but we'll use these in a second. Let's get through these. So again, I know I'm gonna need a segment and I'm going to need my first name. So I'm gonna to go to text. I'm gonna pull in a segment. The text I wanna get from is this TBX first name. Again, that is where the user that is this block right here. That is where the user is actually typing in their name. Scroll down, find the dot text block. If I mouse over it, it returns the text box contents, so what the user typed in. I'm gonna pull that in, put it there. I need to put numbers and start in length. I'm gonna go to math, scroll up. I'm gonna put, I wanna start at one. The length, I wanna get the first two letters, so I'm gonna go to math put two here. And this is get step one, step two, get the first two letters of the first name. I'm gonna stretch this out. We have two more to do, step three, step four. So I'm gonna build out some get procedures. Get last name, step one. And I need to get the first two letters of the mother's maiden name. So I'm gonna go back to text. I'm gonna pull in my segment. I need to come to get the this text box. We named it TBX Mother's Maiden Name here. I'm gonna click on that. Get our text here. I want to start, so I'll drag in zero, press one. The length I wanna get is the first two letters, so I will drag this in. I will add my comment in. Commenting is always great. So step three is to get the first two letters of mother's maiden name. And the last step we need to do is get last name step two. Again, I'm gonna go to the text, I'm gonna pull in segment. I need to get the first three letters of the city you were born in. So this is TBX city born, which text box, scroll down. I'm gonna drag in that, that's the text I wanna split. Click on math. I wanna start at the first letter. I want to get the first three from this. So now, this is going to do the parts that I need. Let me add my comment first, step four. So, and inside of here, we actually want to call these procedures. So remember back here I told you, as you make procedures, you can actually call them with these blocks. We're gonna do that now. We want to get our Star Wars first name, which is these two blocks. And we want to get our Star Wars last name, which are these two blocks. Well, I want to save them in a location. Anytime you want to save a value that you want to reuse, you're going to make a variable. And in App Inventor, on the left side in built-in blocks, you will see variables. So I'm going to click this. And I can get variables, set variables. These are local variables. These are global variables. I'm going to make a global variable. Global variable means it can be used anywhere inside of our coding area. A local variable can only be used, for example, if I put it inside of here, it only is known inside of here. But we want something that's going to be global. So I'm gonna delete this block by right clicking and deleting, or I can drag this to the trash can. So I wanna click back on variables, drag out global, and I'm gonna call this Star Wars first name. Now, whenever you're making a global variable, we're going to make it empty right now. I'm going to make another one, call it star wars 
last name. I'm just making it empty for now. I'm gonna move these variables to the top and move this down. So I want to update this from being empty to actually getting these two values. I'm gonna click on variables. I'm gonna pull in set. I wanna set my Star Wars first name. So I wanna get this plus this. I can go back to procedures and I can pull in get Star Wars first name. Step one. But I don't want to just get this. I need to actually join it together with get first name step two. But there's no way to do that. Well, there is. Because these are two or text, we can actually join these two texts together. So I'm going to click on text block right here. It says join. I'm going to click put that inside of there. I'm going to, for my Star Wars first name, the first part is get first name step one. The second part, I'm going to go back to the procedures and it's going to be get first name step two. So that is going to give me, for example, my last name is Gant. This returns Gant. For here, my first name is Jamie. It would return Ja. So my Star Wars first name here would be Gan Ja because it's going to get Gan from here. It's going to get Ja from here and join that together. So let's do our Star Wars last name. We're going to go to variables, we set Star Wars last name, and let's click on join. We want to go to procedures. We want to get our last name step one. Then we want to get our last name step two. I'm going to zoom out. So my mother's maiden name is not Gant, it was Weaver. So it will return the first two characters, which is we. And down here, my the city I was born in was Detroit, Michigan. So this would return debt. So let's look at this. This, my last name first part would get we from Weaver and it would get debt from Detroit. So my Star Wars last name will be set to we debt. So my Star Wars first name is Ganja, we debt. So let's actually test this and see what happens. So here I'm going to type Jamie, I'm going to type Gant, and it's kind of weird because I have to hide this and click this here and then type Weaver in the emulator. It's better in a device, but that's one of the downfalls of using an emulator. What city was I born in? Detroit. When I press start, what should happen? Nothing's happening. Well, did we program this button? We actually didn't. If you look, we just made a bunch of procedures. The button that we need to program is right here, button start. So I'm gonna click on button start. When someone clicks it, what do I want to do? I want to set our Star Wars name. What do I need to do? I have this procedure I made call set Star Wars name. I want to call that procedure. So I'm gonna go back to procedures. There is my set Star Wars name procedure. And I'm gonna pull this in. Now, when I click it, it will call this, but there's still an error. We're not going to see anything. We're not going to hear anything. So it is calling this, but nothing's happening. Why? We're not showing this anywhere. We're just saving it in the variables and we're not speaking to the user. So remember, we have this text to speech. So why not when we set the Star Wars name, we should also speak it to the user. We're going to go ahead and do text to speech. I'm going to drag this in and here we're going to use a join statement and we're going to say hello Ganja Weedet the force is strong within you so if I wanted to do a message again I would come back up to text and I would pull in this so first I want to say hello and I want to grab these two things but again there's only one place in here for me so what should we do? Well, again, up here we can use join statements. So I want to click on text and pull in a join statement. I'm going to do hello. So when I do hello, I want to make sure I put a space after hello. So make sure you put a space here. The next thing I want to do is actually say my Star Wars first name. 
So I set it here. I simply want to get it. I can go here to variables and do get, or I can mouse over this area and simply get it from this location. If I click, that means you want to rename it. But if I simply mouse over it, I can get my Star Wars first name. Hmm. So now it'll say, hello, my Star Wars first name. Let's see if that works, even though we need to add more to it. So when I click here, Hello, Genja. Hello, Genja. Hello, Genja. So it is saying, hello, Genja. We're working so far. We need to get our last name. But wait, there's no more spaces here. Hmm. So what do we do? Well, any block where you see this little settings icon, you can click on it and modify this block. So I'm going to click on this. And you can see the reason I have two places that I can put text into is because I have two places here that I can put text into. If I need more spaces, I simply drag from the left side to the right. So I'm going to drag this here for the last name. And I'm going to drag one more to say the force is strong within you. So now I need to put my Star Wars last name here. I'm just going to mouse over this and grab it. And then I want to say the force is strong within you. So I'm going to go to text, put this in here, do comma, the force is strong within you. So let's test it and see if we have any errors. Hello again, Jawi Dad. The force is strong within you. There you go. Hello again, Jawi Dad. The force is strong within you. Let's change it around. Let's just see if it works for other names. So I'm going to do my father's name. My dad's name was Willie. His name was also Gant. His mother's maiden name was Irvin. He was born in Perry, Florida. So I'm going to click on start. Hello again, why not your The force is strong within you. So it's kind of hard to make out. So what I want to do is add a label that's also going to show what our Star Wars name is. So let's go back to designer and we're going to click on user interface and I'm going to drag in this label. I'm going to rename this label LBL your Star Wars name. What I'm going to do is make it empty. So I'm just going to delete it and I'm going to make the text color. Let's make it yellow. So when our app first starts, you don't see anything, but we can change this text property to show the Star Wars name. Let's go to blocks inside of set Star Wars name. I want to update that label we just added. I'm going to scroll down. Here's the label LBL your Star Wars name. I'm going to pull in LBL label. I'm doing the dark green one, which is setting it. And I'm gonna do a join statement. So I want the first and the last name. So I'm gonna to go to text, I'm gonna do join, and I'm just going to join my first name. I'm gonna put another here, and I'm gonna put a space because I don't want the names together. So I'm gonna put space, and then I'm gonna get our last name. So let's enter it again. And now we have this label, it's invisible here. But once we press start, it will show us our Star Wars name. So I'm going to put in my name again, and then I'm going to press start. Hello again, shall we dead? The force is strong within you. You can see right here, it shows Ganja we dead. Now we might want to make that bigger. So I'm going to go back to designer. And just so I can see what it is, I'm going to type it in and let's make it 20 six yeah I like 26 and also let's play around let's make it bold let's make it italics and I think that's good for now so again we don't want that to just show up so I'm going to delete this now and let's try it again so let's try it with my father's name now when I press start hello again why I occur the force is strong within you hello can we ear purr my dad has a really weird Star Wars name but it sounds like a pretty cool character hello again why I occur the force is strong within you. So we're done. Everything works, but not really. Sometimes your app will work, but you have to think about times that might break. These are called runtime errors. For example, we just came to this page. Should this work if I press start? 
you can see it gives me an error. Segment start one get three exceeds the length of the text. So you can let's dismiss that. Let's look at what this is saying. Let's do this again. Segment start one get three minus oh, exceeds length. Here I'm trying to get text, but the text is empty. So our app works only if they type in stuff. But you don't want to make an app that only works if they do something. You want to make it for all cases. We need to just make sure that the user types in everything. So I'm going to make one procedure. And this is how computers make decisions. They make that with conditionals. It's called an if statement. Let's go ahead and make one other procedure. I want to call check info not blank. So we're going to check each one of these. And if they're not blank, we will do this. But if they are blank, then we will tell the user, hey, you need to enter in some information. Please fill out the information. So again, it's called a condition. We're gonna go to control. This is the statement. Every app, everything, every computer you use, uses if statements to make decisions. So I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna put this inside of here. So I wanna see if this text box is not empty and this text box is not empty and this text box is not empty and this text box is not empty i know i need the text box so i'm going to click on i'm getting my last name i'm going to get my text that does not fit in there because it is simply text i can't say if can't i have to have a condition and what i want to say is if this is not empty well, this is text. So again, anytime you want to manipulate text, I'm going to go to text. And you can see right here, there is a empty. So I'm saying if this is empty, but I don't want to say if it's empty, I want to say if it's not empty. So that comes from logic. So I'm going to come up here to logic and I'm going to grab my not. And it looks weird, but it says if not, is empty text box. This is really saying if this text box is not empty. I need to do the exact same thing for my other guys. So let's just drag out all of them. So I'm going to drag in my text box name text because I need to check all of these. I'm going to go to up to text. I'm going to pull in is empty is empty. Now there's a quicker way to do this. You can duplicate codes, but we're starting. So I want you to get used to finding out where these are. Last thing we need is the not. So I'm gonna click on here, not, not, not. Now we need to say if this is not empty and this is not empty and this is not empty and this is not empty, that means our info is not blank, right? Well, this only has room for one thing. I can't put all four in there. So what can we do? Well, it's logic. So logic, I'm gonna go check this. And you can see I have an and block. So I'm gonna click on this and drag this inside of here. So I could put that in there and this in there. But wait, I have two more guys that I need to add in. Hmm. Well, remember earlier I told you, if you see this settings box, you can click on it. And now I need two other places. So I'm gonna click on this and there and click on this and add it in there. Now this is very long, so I'm going to collapse it. You can collapse blocks. I'm gonna right click and do collapse block. And it's saying if the text block is not empty, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna collapse this one, collapse block this one. So this is, I'm gonna leave this one open, but the rest of these are actually collapsed. I actually could collapse just this block and you can see it kind of goes out. I'm gonna expand it to kind of leave it there for you on the screen. So we're saying check if this is not empty. Well, what are we doing if it's not empty? Well, I'm gonna pull, I wanna set my Star Wars name. So I'm gonna pull this from here and call set Star Wars name. Now what happens if it is empty? We want to actually tell the user, hey, please enter in all the information. So here we're gonna say if or else. So again, the if block has this little settings box. I'm gonna click it and it's either they're not empty or they are. So my else is going to be, there is something that is empty. I'm gonna click else. 
down here, we're simply going to add in text to speech. And I am going to add a text box and say, please enter all information. So now button start, I need to fill in something. Well, I'm going to call check info not blank. So I'm going to go to procedures. Now I know this is a lot of code, but I wanted to show you from the beginning, just walking through on paper, you know how to make someone's Star Wars name, but it is a little bit more complex when you actually do it for code. So let's go ahead and try testing this now. This is all blank. Please enter all the information. Please enter all the information. So that's working. Let's test that it still works. So I'm going to put in my name again. So, so now I've entered everything. Hello again, Jawide. The force is strong within you. So I'm going to delete my first name. Please enter all the information. Please enter all the information. So here's another error. This is still showing up. Please enter all the information. Even though there's an error here. So anytime someone presses start, Please enter all the information. We want to get rid of this text. So I'm going to go down to LBL, your Star Wars name. I'm going to grab the text. And anytime someone presses that button, I'm just going to erase the text. So I'm going to grab this text box and put this here. Please enter all the information. So you can see. Please enter it all the information. Hello again, shall we dead? The force is strong within you. So I'm going to come back here, delete this. Please enter all the information. And there we go. So we are done with our code. Again, on paper, it was very easy to do, but you can see we came up into some errors that we had to kind of fix. Last thing I want to do is yeah that's cool but we have all these great star wars effects so let's sound effects so let's play some of these so let's do when our screen starts do, 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 do. and again we'll just place these somewhere when our screen starts what sound effect do we want to play let's play give yourself to the dark side and we have a sound effect the force will be with you let's add that and you set your star wars name so after they say your Star Wars name, I want to say the force will be with you. So I want them to speak and then do that. So let's go back to text to speech. They have this event block called after speaking. I'm just gonna pull that out. And I want to say play the force will be with you after you speak. We also have our logo and we We'll simply play the lightsaber sound. Do, 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 do. And we always should have a way to get back to home. So we're gonna close the screen to take us back to the home screen. I'm gonna go up to control and I'm just gonna do close screen. So we have everything here. Let's test what we just added. When the screen launches, it should say, give yourself to the dark side. If I click on the logo, it should say Saber. Whenever I get my Star Wars name, it will speak. And after it speaks, it's gonna say, the force will be with you. So let's try just after the speak. Hello again, shall we dead? The force is strong within you. Remember, the force will be with you. So this is part is working. Let's try the image logo. So when we touch this, it should play the lightsaber sound and go close the screen, which takes us back to our home screen. So I'm clicking this. Let's go back and check our, you can see here's an error. I did not do clickable. So I'm gonna do clickable. Give yourself to the dark side. So here you see this is working now. Whenever my screen shows up, it plays give yourself to the dark side. Because I made my image clickable, this should now work. So I'm gonna... Takes me back to the home page. The force is strong within you. The force is strong within you. Give 
So that completes our tutorial on my Star Wars names. Yes, it was very easy to do on paper, but a little bit more challenging to give the instructions to the computer. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save and then turn it into your teacher. You're gonna to go to Screencast Omatic. You're gonna click on Start Recording. You're going to launch the free recorder. So you will use this to record your app actually working. Simply press record, save it, then turn it into your teacher.